you just look very. Do you know? Do you know who Pocahontas is? Sorry. Pocahontas. Do you know who that is? Yeah. I know. Yes. You you have a very like Pocahontas look, and it's so. Yeah, it looks wonderful. There's a misconception that I really want you to get insight into now. Just because you're good at conversation does not equal connection. This is one of the greatest misconceptions that guys have in relation to women. They think if I just would ask a more interesting question, if I could just get around this and ask something that's a little bit more deep, that me and the girl will be able to get on better. And I tell you right now, being a good conversationalist means nothing in relation to how the woman is going to feel around you. What's more important is your relationship to silence. Hello. I know, I waved at you like I absolutely know you, but I have no clue who you are. You just look very, do you know, do you know who Pocahontas is? Sorry? Pocahontas, do you know who that is? Yeah, I know. Yes, you, you have a very like Pocahontas look. And it's so, yeah, it looks wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> so what kind of day is today for you? I have a day off now, so I meet my friends. On a Monday you have the day off? Yeah, I have a day off. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the... Yeah, because I'm working almost every uh, weekend, so. So I have a day off on a... How do you, uh, besides hanging out with your friends? Sorry? I said, besides hanging out with your friends? Yeah. Uh, what do you do to get away from all the biz <laughs> to get away from all the busyness of your life? What do you do? Uh, now I'm working on a coffee shop at the Buddha Castle. Yeah. So, it's just now I'm just uh, collect some money because I want to be a hairdresser. The school is. Uh, so much money. <laughs> I'm looking at yours. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, not so good now. Okay. So you're actually building toward a dream of yours. Sorry. <laughs> you're building toward yeah. a dream of yours. Yes, yes, yes. I like that. <laughs> that that's actually, especially here in Hungary, I find that to be even more endearing. Yeah. Do you understand? Sure. Yeah, I find it to be even more wonderful when a girl can come towards her dreams. Because uh, in America, that's like more of this thing, yeah, like going to your out, dreams. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, where are you meeting your friends? Uh, at the street. Oh, uh, this street. Yeah. <laughs> are you in holiday or working here? No, I live here. Why? <laughs> from America, in Budapest. Yes. I would choose Budapest over America any day. Yeah, I've actually been here for three years. So it's like I've had time to shift and adjust to the culture here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really different. Can't believe I, I've never been in America. Just seeing the movies. Where do you see yourself, like with your hairdressing? Where do you see yourself doing it? In Hungary or London? Like, where do you see yourself? Well, I don't know. I like uh, living here, but uh, maybe I want to see the world, so I'm not sure I'm living forever. Okay. My sister is uh, lived in Malta, and uh, maybe she wants to. Did you say Malta? Malta. Oh, Malta, yeah, yes. My, my sister lived there. Yeah. Before she lived in London for six years. And now she uh, moved uh, to Budapest. But uh, maybe she went to back uh, to Malta because the people are that different, uh, like here. Yeah. You, you <laughs> don't look full Hungarian. You look like you're mixed with, with Arabic. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm full Hungarian. Really, your mom and your dad is Hungarian? Yeah, yeah. You look like you're mixed with something. Yeah, I'm not. 
hát. I've actually seen many Hungarian looks. <laughs> I have. Like when you go to a place like Italy, everybody has dark features. Yeah. Like here, I've seen blonde, redhead. I've seen mainly dark. But yeah, you're right. They have a lot of different. Looks. Yeah, my uh, brother has a red hair. So. <laughs> It's, yeah. Oh, what happened to you? No, Your I brother's a redhead? I four siblings, mm -hmm. <laughs> so and everybody looks different. My sister has a blue eyes, so... And my mother and my father is the same, so I don't know why. <laughs> I have four, five siblings. Mm -hmm. So you come from a big family too? <laughs> yes, I have. Are you guys all close? Or are you like, you like your sister but you don't like your brother? That's great. It's very rare that I meet someone who is actually close to their family, like me, because I'm close to everybody. We have a very good relationship, so. Yeah, well, my father and my mother is definitely each other, but... Oh, they're divorced? Yeah, divorced. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I like talking to you. I think you're pretty, you look, you still look like Pocahontas, you do? <laughs> you do look like Pocahontas. Um, how tall are you? I'm curious. Uh, You're actually taller than me, I think. You know, there's a bug, but that bu a bug has been crawling in your hair this whole time, and I haven't told, said anything about it. What? There's a bug in your hair. It's been crawling this whole time, yeah. and it's, I haven't said anything about it. <laughs> so when you see me there, speaking to her, I'm interested in not am I asking things that are right, what's the great next thing to ask, How can I say something that's a little bit more interesting? Because if I was doing that, I would forget that me and the girl is more important than trying to say the thing so me and her can find something that we can speak about. How we feel is more important than what we say. So I tell you, forget about being good at conversation. Forget about it. There's no need to strive to be great at it. And this is what I constantly see. Comments like, what do I say next? How do I just keep the conversation going? How do I not run out of things to say? All three of these have one underlying issue. And that's the inability to settle into silence. That's the root issue. How do I never run out of things to say? Let's think about this. How do I never run out of things to say? You're basically saying, how do I always speak? When I'm there in front of a girl, how do I maintain speaking the whole time with her? It's very unnatural. How do I just keep the conversation going? Also very unnatural. Because when you're always trying to keep the conversation going, you'll say anything just so she can latch on in some way. And if she doesn't latch on, you stress out even more and you try to say more. So you're always in a place of stress. It's just as unnatural as how do I never run out of things to say. And the other one I forgot right now, but all three 
are simply unnatural to the way of speaking to someone. I have a video I created. And it's called, I Keep Running Out of Things to Say. And the title is, Awkward Silence is What Women Want. It's actually what women want. I'll put a link in below so you can be able to see that because I talk about silence in that one as well. But trying to be, always be good at conversation will stress you out because you're always trying to look for the new thing. You're always trying to see, like, how can I ask something that's a little bit different? And you forget that that's not getting you closer to the woman. It's getting you closer to topics that she cares about, but it's actually not getting you closer to her. And one may say, once you get to topics that she cares about, it'll then get closer to her. Yes, that can be a route, but it's a very, very long route because you're doing it from the place of, we're not here. I better say all these things so we can be here. That's the misconception. That's one of the greatest misconceptions that I think the community has pressed upon a man. I have to so forget about being great at conversation. There's no need to. And I say don't be good at conversation or don't want to be good at conversation because you think as a result, women will perceive you better than other men. And let me tell you, they will. They definitely will perceive you better than other men. But in the long run, it definitely won't be like that. Talk to a woman. Ask her, did she have a great conversation with some man? She'll say yeah. And ask her what happened later. Well, he wasn't like this or he didn't turn out to be this way. Because in actuality, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. We love, as men, to be seen significantly different than other men. We love it. The reason why is because that means we have a certain level of respect that other men have to work to get. That who we are is more attractive. Who we are, women want. It feels like a level of pedestal. And if you look at the reason why some men want to be great at conversation is so they can be perceived better by the woman. And wow, wow, wow. I used to follow this track too. I thought that if I was to just ask a better question, she would perceive me as different than other guys. If I would just ask the question that girls wouldn't be prepared for, that she would give me a chance, unlike the guy who would ask something that's a little bit boring. And I was right. She definitely did. But I got more of a kick to let you know, and you will too. I got more of a kick out of how good I was at conversation than actually the feeling that was happening between me and her. What was happening underneath the surface kind of lost its charge because I was egotistically held up by my want to be perceived as a great conversation. Somebody who wouldn't ask the question that's boring. Someone who has something interesting to say. Someone who would bring up topics that would really get to know the woman. In the long run, like now, in the long run, it mean nothing. It absolutely means nothing. If you want women to perceive you as great conversationalists, then you work towards that. You fucking do it. Work towards being a great conversationist. But I tell you right now, I know guys who I've coached 
who can say things that sound like great conversation, who can make remarks that can get the girl, give the girl a chance to open up more in the way that she's speaking about something, but they don't know anything about how to be there fully with his whole self. He don't know what it's like to be in silence and be there in front of the girl. Because this whole track has been, how can I never run out of things to say? How do I keep the conversation going? He doesn't know that every engagement, being totally engaged, which will be conversation, has this counterpart, which is silence. Has its complementary opposite, which is silence. I want you to fall in love with silence. Fall in love with it. Silence is more attractive than you think. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about being engaged while you're silence, in silence. Something that I teach men when they come and do coaching for me. Not to be silent, but be engaged in the silence. So the silence means something. It's not about just shutting up. It's about being totally there in the silence. Why do you always want to keep the conversation going? This is my question to you. Why do you always? Can I answer for you? It's because you're afraid of silence. This is why. If you weren't afraid of silence, you would not say, how do I keep the conversation going? You would not try to get away from the moments where there's nothing being said because you're afraid that if nothing is said, she'll walk away. You will not try to get away from those moments. You would let them unfold. And to let you know, when you're afraid of silence between you and the girl, which means nothing being said verbally and you two just being there, when you're afraid of that, it just means you're afraid of the silence within. You're afraid to be silent within yourself. The guy who always want to keep things going, the guy who is always like, how do I never run out of things to say? This is the guy, if you actually looked at what was happening inside of him, it would be like this. It would never be any chance for there to be clear space. It'll always be churning and churning and churning and trying to get the next, the next thing for the, for the next thing to say and the, and the next feeling for the next thing. And it robs him of his chance to actually be totally there. I'm not silent in front of a woman because I believe that this is better than conversation. No, that's not why I'm silent. I'm silent because I actually just don't have anything to say. That's why I'm silent. And sometimes this can freak women out. This can freak others out. Because they're so used to the churning wheel. They're so used to saying this thing, to say this thing, to say this thing. When they don't know all of the effort is simply to get away from being silent. That's all the effort. All the effort is silence is awkward. That's all the effort. Get away from the silence. And when they're constantly in that place, they will feel imbalanced. just like I felt. I felt like there's times I'm speaking and I don't want to speak. There's times where I'm like, okay, what do I say next? When actually I just want to be in silence. I don't have anything to say right now. Is that okay? That's why I used to think to myself like, that it must be okay. Like I don't have anything to say. I feel under pressure that I must say something right now. She asked me a question, I have to say something right now. And it's not the truth. I had to have the courage to go. When I don't have anything to say, I just won't say anything. I won't. And this made the greatest difference.
I must tell you, the greatest difference is gonna be when you are there totally in the silence and in the engagement. That's when the difference will be made. Not only with how do I keep conversation going, but no, the moments where conversation is not there, you don't have anything to say, you don't have something to be engaged in, and you allow yourself to be engaged like this. That's just as powerful as being engaged as you speak. Just as powerful. I end this video with be engaged in silence and be engaged as you speak. Care about what you ask and listen with your entire self when you don't have something to ask or share or express. If you want to know information on anything, any of my insights, I have insights that I share with my list, but it's also on my website. Go to theessenceofmen.com. There you'll be able to find out where I'm at, my coaching that's available, and everything you need to know. I have a free Meet the Bedroom series. Everything from what do you do before you even approach to let's go upstairs. Totally free for you. I'll put it in the description box as well with the link to my website. Subscribe so you can follow this and share this with anybody who you feel will be able to understand this. Like I always say, who you are is valuable for that which you want in life and in relation to women. It's just realizing it. I'll talk to you in a few days.